What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's me Mamba and for today's video we're going to be going over the OEM airbox and whether or not you should keep it and also a pretty cool thing that I'm actually going to be doing with my airbox that you can do for your car if you're not really looking to get you know a cold air intake or a short ram intake. So let's go over that right now. So as many of you guys know I recently moved up to Anaheim California uh, where a lot of things have been going on for me in, in my career and I'm actually really excited. Before I went up there, I went back to stock just because I had my emissions testing and then registration and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure everything was going to be good and that I wouldn't have any issues. Plus the gas mileage with this thing is phenomenal with everything back to stock. Uh, I do, I do kind of want to modify it just a little bit just to get things more fun, but I'll give you a rundown of basically what I had before this. So before this, I had a in-gen cold air intake, PLM headers, and then also an NVIDIA Q300 uh, exhaust. Uh, I love that setup, it sounded really great. Uh, but unfortunately, like I said, with emissions and everything here in California, I just decided to go completely back to stock and then I had a nightmare story with my cold air intake. Talk to you guys about that later. Oh, getting started, why would you want to keep your stock intake? It doesn't make noise, it doesn't increase power, it just kind of sits there and takes up a lot of space in this engine bay. So the reason you're going to want to keep your stock airbox, one, eventually you're going to want to go back to stock and you can slap it back on before you sell the car and you can sell your intake for a little, a little bit extra money. Second of all, you can also modify this to be very great for dailying, especially for track use, autocross and even streets of Willow here in California, because all the tracks are in the desert, so it's going to get hot. So the benefit of your stock air box is that when it takes in air, it's getting it from a nice insulated box. So it's constantly receiving fresh air. Yes, it's not as cold as a cold air intake, but a cold air intake still heat soaks. Any type of aftermarket intake system is great, but especially when you're on the dyno, but you can kind of manipulate a lot of things on the dyno. You can have the hood up, you can have a bunch of air hitting your engine and hitting your intake at all times. So then you get those nice peak powers. But realistically, your engine is always going to get hot. Your intakes are always going to get hot. Even this gets hot, but it's not going to get as hot as all aftermarket systems. So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be taking this air box out. We'll take a look at it and I'll show you what's actually going on inside your air box. And then from there, we'll modify it so you get more induction noise, more airflow, and a bit more power. Not going to be crazy amounts, but it's going to be amazing because you still get to keep your factory stuff, especially if you're in California. Staying as close to factory as possible is going to save you a lot of headaches later down the road. So let's get started. We're going to remove this air box and I'll lay them off some, some tools you need, which is going to be a eight millimeter socket, an extension, a ratchet, some cutters, a handsaw, some silicone, and also some patience. So with that being said, let's get this airbox out and I'll be showing you guys what we're going to be doing to modify it. So the whole ordeal about my cold air intake and my smog happened this year. So after having that cold air intake for three years and going through two smogs, they finally decided to run the CARB EO number and we found out that it actually is only applicable to 2002 RSX Type S's. So I have the very first generation engine cold air intake and I decided to sell it get one that was actually updated with the new EO number and then I traded my short ram intake for this stock airbox and I actually had the Honda airbox mod done when I first bought the car I just didn't know what it was so I hope you guys enjoy all right so now that we have the stock airbox open let's actually see how this works out when you're actually driving the car air comes in through here through the bottom goes into this chamber and this tube which goes on the very top of it sucks in air from the top so that everything around all the air around it has to go through the filter then from there comes right through here right through this tube right through this tube into your throttle body and then makes it to your engine so what's all this extra stuff that you're seeing right here so right here when air is coming in through here air also makes its way into this little chamber this chamber is to deaden all the the intake induction noise because when you're selling a car to a consumer market not a lot of your customers are going to want to hear induction noise all the time. You'd be surprised how many old people drive RSXs every single day and how many times I've seen them all the time. And they look so nice. So what we're going to be doing, right, is we're going to be cutting out everything. We're going to be cutting out this wall, cutting open this tube, removing this tube, cutting these fins all around. And we're going to be swapping this, this filter, this paper filter for a nice, nice, easy breathing K&N filter. 
And on top of that, on the top side, we're going to be cutting out this box because this box is basically like this chamber just minimized to help reduce um, induction noise. So with that being said, let's get started. Another thing, shout out to homie Rishi. He was actually able to get me his, uh, he, he actually gave me his stock airbox. We traded our, uh, my short RAM for it. Uh, I had a big issue going on with my, my emissions testing with my cold air intake. And luckily he was willing to trade the, his stock airbox for my short RAM, which I also had. So I hope he's enjoying that one. And uh, again, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so we're going to start off with the top, just with this chamber. Do not mess with this one. This is actually for your PCV. Positive crankcase ventilation. So basically when uh, you get blow-by from your pistons, it creates pressure in the engine. So this is actually supposed to relieve it. You do get a little bit of oil. Uh, so this chamber actually helps with, you know, preventing too much of it. And it kind of circulates the air a little bit better. We're just going to focus on this big one right here. The reason we're going to start off with this one is because once you open up this chamber, you're going to get an open hole. And this hole is not what you want because then you're going to start getting unfiltered air into your actual induction uh, into your in actual induction system and you don't want that you want everything to be filtered out so we're going to start off with this seal it so that when we're actually working on the bottom section right over there it seals or it uh cures as we're finishing up so let's get started with that for this you're actually going to need a hammer and uh, possibly a chisel you're going to use the leftover pieces that you get from this for uh sealing up your chamber right here so let's just get a small hammer this stuff really just taps out really gently or taps out really nicely i highly suggest having something to kind of cushion the other side you don't want to scratch up this end because that's what everybody sees when you open up your engine bay so yeah get something to protect the bottom and all we're going to be doing is cutting this out you don't necessarily have to cut this stuff out unless you really want to uh, i really don't see a benefit to it but if you'd like you can cut that out leave these fins uh, leave these fins because those actually help uh, hold your filter in so leave these fins but you can cut this wall out Alrighty, so with the hammer as you can see I tapped out that middle section I left everything in there just because it was very difficult to access and I didn't really want to waste too much time doing this So I just kind of just you know left it in there plus all the airflow is really going from the bottom So the top really doesn't affect it as much as you think which is why I also left like the wall up and stuff like that Plus it adds rigidity. So I just decided to keep it in there too But that's basically how it looks on this side and that's how it looks on the inside. I'm just going to clean up all these little silicone flakes. Uh, it's all dried up now and uh, it's getting ready to go. So all we got to do now is knock out the bottom. And we are all done. So basically what I used... All I used was this DeWalt handsaw or Stanley, my bet. So basically what I used was this Stanley handsaw. It was a small one. Got it from Home Depot for a couple bucks. And then also these cutters. These cutters worked really great for me because they were able to get these side ribs. So let me show you. Like right there. Able to get more flush pieces on the side. Um, I didn't really care too much about it. So this, this one actually you just used some dikes or some side cutters. My bad. You politically correct people out there. But all in all, this is how it is you're not going to be able to cut the wall down all the way just because once you get to this point which is about like a half an inch or an inch up it starts actually separating so i had to fill that in with uh i actually had to fill that in with some silicone so that's what i did it's all dry now so let's go ahead and show you guys the filter and here she is this nice beautiful k n filter picked this one off of amazon for i think it was like 63 dollars after tax whereas if you get this from autozone it's like 75 which is pretty ridiculous but yeah i'll leave the link down to this one down below um i'll try finding the link for these two tools which are also what you're going to need to take out all this material and with that being said let's slap this baby in so i'm also going to go over a few things that you can also do to kind of improve the amount of cold air that you're getting into your car um but after that prices kind of start getting higher and higher and eventually it comes to the point where if you want to invest that much money into just like a stock airbox or if you'd like to put that money towards like a short ram or a cold air intake but at the end of the day it's up to you and it's also up to whatever goals you have set in mind for your car so let's get this thing installed so i actually sprayed some throttle body cleaner in this uh intake duct just to clean out as much dust as you can tell it really did nothing but Something's better than nothing, I guess. I'm just gonna let this, uh, these ribs kind of dry out too. 
Okay, so while the uh, intake ducting is drying, let's kind of go over what else you can do to get the most out of this stock airbox system. Uh, the reason I didn't do all, everything that I'm going to be listing off is just because of the pricing of it. Sometimes you can't really justify the price of spending the money on the K&N intake and all the other things I'm about to list off because at that point you can also get a... Um, at that point, you can also get a engine cold air intake or any cold air intake system, short RAM, whatever you want to get. So that's why I didn't include it in this video. This is more of a budget friendly thing for everybody to kind of do. Uh, but let's see what else we can do. So first off, you can replace this duct, which connects from your throttle body to your actual air box. You can replace this. So the reason you'd want to replace this is just because on the inside right here, you have those little divots, which actually decrease the velocity of air that's going into your throttle body. Uh, whether or not that really affects a huge amount, uh, it doesn't really matter. But when you're really kind of going for more performance, you want it to be as smooth as possible. The stock S2000 one is, pr is really smooth, which is why S2000 Hondata air box is they don't really need to replace this. You can get this from Tegua uh, from the UK. You just got to pay a crap ton in shipping as well as that $130, $150 price tag on it. I'm not sure that. Or you can get Samco Sport, which is US made, uh, which is also around $120, $130. Uh, I was fortunately able to get a used silicone uh, duct hose from eBay. Unfortunately, I can't share the link because it was used and it was the last one in stock. Uh, and I don't really recommend buying the eBay brands just because I don't know how durable they are. So I don't want anybody damaging their engines. Whether you want to do it or not, that's up to you. Uh, I'll just put a picture up and not a link. So that's up to your own discretion. Uh, but yeah, so that's something you can replace. So another thing that you can do is you can actually replace this hose right here that goes, uh, that actually gets the air in. You can replace this with is you, you'll cut it up right here. You'll get three inch brake duct tubing. I recommend the tubing that's lined with silicone to keep as much heat out from there you can run a filter about a seven inch or eight inch filter uh, that goes right behind here it's going to be similar to the mugen intake where it actually is in the similar location and then from there you'll be getting airflow from the vent you'll be getting airflow from the front basically from right down here it's going to flow up there and you get better fresh air um I know there was somebody in the, the forums a long time ago that tried doing something similar, trying to sell it, uh, make it mainstream, but unfortunately that didn't really work out for him too well. Uh, or so I, I mean, I assume because nobody really agreed with him, but <laughs> I'll picture that up right now. Um, what that's going to be able to do is it's actually going to take away all of these like rough, um, these uh, grooves right there make it more smooth and you get actually more streamlined airflow as well so that's basically what i'll do i'll line that up right now and i'll kind of talk more about it right now but we're just going to assemble this and then see how it goes all righty it's all put back together now so we're just going to go for a drive and see if i can really hear uh, a huge difference now that all the noise cancellation stuff is taken out um, like I said, this is more of like a budget thing. You know, you can go all out like what I'm kind of doing and I'm getting the new silicone uh, throttle body to airbox thing and a brand new brake duct with the big funnel right here. Um, but yeah, and then I'm not sure if I'll actually go back to having a full race car, race car again, you know. I like it stock. I've been getting crazy gas mileage. What's up, Chevy? I've been getting crazy gas mileage with it and I'm really kind of enjoying it. Power band is really smooth, you know, that's what it's really made for. So I guess the only bolt-ons I really have is the uh, JDM Type R PRC intake manifold and the Type R cams, that's about it. Everything else is running cherry. So yeah, let's go for a drive and see how it feels. Also, another benefit to this uh, Honda airbox is that when it rains, you don't have to worry about, you know, hydro locking or anything like that. So I just realized that right now because it just started raining out of nowhere. It's been sunny for the past couple days and then just out of nowhere, it just started raining. But yeah, that's also another benefit to this. 
so you get cold air you don't get a lot of heat soak and you're also protected from hydro locking so yeah those are just some things to look out for so i think i'm gonna end the video off here uh there's not much induction noise that i'm able to get just because i'm going back through the footage and it doesn't really pick it up as much as you as much as i'd like to because it does increase induction noise there's definitely a huge difference but with all the wind noise and everything the camera just picks everything up so you can't really hear it that well but yeah i think i'm just gonna end the video off here and uh yeah i'll let i'll let later me take it from here i guess <laughs> But yeah guys, so that's going to conclude this video. I'm already on my way back home. Right now I'm enjoying the intake. Uh, it's feeling very smooth. It's feeling very nice. Uh, I do hear a lot more induction noise. As I've stated, like removing those two noise cancellation boxes really makes a huge difference. Now whether or not that's going to get old for me every time I come back home after visiting my family, who knows. It's looking pretty cool. But it is causing a lot of traffic because people like to slow down and watch. But that's going to be everything for me today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, please leave a thumbs down. And if you do me the favor of just uh, responding what you didn't like about the video, that would help me out a lot. I like to create better content for you guys. I don't like to stay the same over a long period of time. So with all that said, guys, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you have a magical day with these fireworks. <laughs> She works there, which is pretty sick. But yeah, guys, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be it for me today. Hope you guys have a lovely evening, morning, or day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey!